to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Jason Gilboa, Jake Gilboa 11. Taking a look at all the games on today's slate here, which is broken up into two. So, no matter what slate you're going for, we got you covered. You can skip later if you're just doing the late, if you're doing it all day, watch the whole thing, whatever. Um, overall, I mean, it's a pretty enticing slate as far as both of them go. I mean, you got a nice big day one, uh, sizable GPPs. So, it uh, should be overall a pretty fun slate. Uh, jumping into this first game here, we're going to take a look at the White Sox and Mets. Jose Quintana versus Matt Harvey. Uh, 7200 there for Matt Harvey, enticing price tag. But the Jose Quintana price tag, 9300 is not that bad. And I kind of like him a bit more here on FanDuel. Uh, nice strikeout upside against this Mets team that strike out quite a bit against lefties. Um, they're also ranked, you know, in the bottom half in Woba. So, overall, the way Quintana's pitched, the floor he's, he's given us a pretty quality cash game option. But I like him in GPPs as well. Um... As far as the White Sox go against Matt Harvey, um, the price tags are a little bit steeper than I would like. I, I still think there are better options, but I don't mind Melky Cabrera or Adam Eaton or Jose Abreu. Uh, Todd Frazier, 39, is a little bit rough, but you would kind of complete a uh, stack if you're going that way to be super contrarian. Or maybe you just don't like Matt Harvey and you just want to pick on them anyway. Um, but overall, I mean, they're in play if you want to be really super contrarian on the early slate. I mean, Harvey hasn't been good this season. Uh, the velocity is down, so it is something to consider. Um, as far as the Mets side of things go, I'm not really looking to pick on Quintana. There's just better options to go on this slate. Uh, next game here, you got the Giants and Braves, and I love Jeff Samarja, solid cash game guy. Uh, also a GPP upside, even though Atlanta's kind of cut that strikeout rate down a bit from earlier in the year. But as far as Vegas odds go, he's one of the better ones on the slate. Uh, he's pitched awesome this season he's been over 40 FanDuel points uh you know over the entire month of may 10-7 isn't really that daunting of a price tag i think you can roll with it uh in some of these bats here i mean the giants aren't too badly priced as far as that mid-range goes posey belt a little bit more expensive than than what you like for their production this season but i, I do like denard span at 32 i do like hunter pence at 36 um even brian crawford down at 31 is a nice play and matt duffy's a guy who i'm liking just because Fulty Notes has been mainly bad against lefties, 4, 418 Woba, 228 home runs per nine uh, since 2014 there. But also, I mean, righties have hit him pretty well. So 341 Woba, 1.23 home runs per nine there since 2014. You kind of look at this Giants offense, and they're kind of a nice pivot off of some of those popular ones, like Coors, like the Houston-Arizona game, like Boston, like Baltimore. So uh, certainly something to consider. Um I think they come away as kind of one of my favorites options just because price considered there. So uh, as far as the brave side of things go, there's no one I'm really looking to take, even to be super contrarian. Uh, looking at Boston here and Baltimore in Ken Yards, there's some rain. This is probably going to be one of those games that gets delayed, but be sure to check things out there because um, maybe they do postpone, maybe they don't. But because it's a day game, they should just wait things out. Um, but obviously, be sure to check out um, – you know, uh, weather beforehand. So uh, overall, I mean, obviously Boston's going to come in as kind of your top team here. They got another high total. It's Camden Yards. Curious to see what they do with that lineup. Just if Ortiz is out again, uh, obviously he would be a top play if he's back in the lineup. Um, some of these bats are getting a little too pricey for me, and I think it's they're solid plug-in plays. But also there are some good options on the, on the slate, and there's even the Colorado side. Um, that they match their prices with. So that is something to consider. I mean, it could take their, their ownership a little bit lower. Um, but as well, I mean, Cam Yards is the top five hitters park for me. Um, as Boston offense has been, you know, tops in just about everything against right-handed pitching so far this season. And, and uh, Wilson, not a strong arm by any means. So uh, overall, you can look at guys like Betts and Jackie Bradley Jr., Bogarts. Uh, I think it is an interesting swerve off the of cores and some of those other games because they are pricey. Uh, a guy I do like is Travis Shaw, 3,900. Uh, Camden Yards enhances power from the left side. That's one of the cheaper options, and it's not necessarily cheap, but it's one of the cheaper options in comparison to the Boston Bats. Um, so certainly playable there. Uh, as far as the Orioles side goes, I don't mind their price tags here on FanDuel if you want to take some shots in GPPs. Uh, they haven't seen Stephen Wright this year, so that's something that could. It's always something. He's been good against teams that he's seen first. The only team that really got to him was... Houston, and that was because they faced him the second time. So, uh, right overall, I mean, at that price, second 9200, I'm not really looking at him as a guy today. Uh, it's a little more than I would want. 
But you can always look at a guy like Mark Trumbo at 3,700, Chris Davis at 38. There's always some power opportunities in Camden Yards, especially against a knuckleballer. So it's definitely something to work, to, to look at, but uh, it's not something that I rank as a high priority. Uh, next one here, you got the Cardinals and Brewers in Miller Park. This one was a little bit different because I think the Cardinals bats are are decently priced, um, still a little bit higher than I would like. They haven't been extremely consistent all year, like, like some of the other teams that are priced in a similar range. But uh, overall, certainly playable against Junior Guerrero, who's, yes, we've been using, but he's been using him against uh, bad opponents and these Cardinals team in Miller Park are certainly a favorable spot. Uh, I do like Piscotti. I do like Carpenter up top. Gritchuk's priced at 3400 is a little more than I would like. Uh, I don't mind taking a shot at Matt Adams as far as the GPP guys. I do like Matt Holliday as a $2,900 outfielder. Um, where, I mean, nothing really special to me that, that it kind of has me fading Cardinals. And you look at the ballpark factors, uh, certainly playable here. So overall, I think this Cardinals team certainly a, an interesting swerve on the early day because they do right kind of behind the Giants, behind the, the Coors game behind even that Chase Field game. So I think you can get them at low ownership, and uh, they definitely have some upside. The Milwaukee Bats, uh, because they've kind of hit well this season, uh, obviously guys like Jonathan Villar, uh, Ryan Braun are priced up. Who knows if he's even in the lineup. Uh, Carlos Martinez, kind of an, uh, an interesting arm here because, yes, he's been struggling uh, over the last really four or five starts, but uh, a decent matchup against Milwaukee, who, if they are without Braun, heavily right-handed, uh, that is something that Carlos Martinez has been tough on. So something to consider. I'm still not a big fan of the par factors. There is a lower floor than desired. But necessarily, I'm not really picking on uh, Martinez, and I'm not um, really intrigued with any of those bats, really. So uh, I think there are far better options in the Brewers' bats there. Uh, Milwaukee and Oakland, uh, this one's intriguing because I think you are going to get some lower ownership, and there are some decent value plays. Uh, Miguel Sano, 4K, uh, always big-time power against Graveman, who – not very good, doesn't miss a ton of bats. So those homeward in four straight games. Uh, obviously, that's going to have to come to, to an end sooner or later. But uh, overall, you can't knock that upside. I mean, we've seen it. Uh, you can also look at this Oakland team for a lot of value. I know Chris Davis and Danny Valencia aren't facing, uh, you know, a lefty. So it kind of takes the appeal out of them. But overall, at their, their price, I think they're definitely worth a shot as far as maybe a one-off GPP contrarian play. Uh, I don't mind them. Just because, one, Irvin Santana, not a strong pitcher. Um, and really, I mean, right-handers, yes, he's been somewhat tough on, but not been, nothing too crazy. And I think you look at the uh, ground ball rate, there is some opportunity for some homers there. Uh, if you want to cheap punt play catcher, Stephen Folk's a guy, 2,400, who I'm taking a look at. He's probably one of the, the fewer cheaper options that, behind the dish that I definitely don't mind. Uh, Houston, Arizona here. Uh, Colin McHugh, Edwin Escobar, uh, 4,600. Um, you look at these Houston bats, and they're in play here uh, against the lefty, of course, in Chase. And I like their prices a lot more than DraftKings because the DraftKings priced them up. Uh, 3,800 there for Altuve is a nice price for him. George Springer as well. Both hit lefties very well. You like the park factors. Carlos Correa at 3,700. So it is an interesting, interesting option to see how many people go down to that level of of Houston bats who haven't been consistent this year. Um, so I, I do think cash game wise, wholesale two is the guy I like a little bit more uh, in cash games, George Springer as well. Correa kind of more GPP until he kind of picks things up a bit, but obviously big time power. Love Evan Gaddis at 3,200 behind the plate. So overall this game has a lot of appeal on both sides and, and those Houston top four hitters as incons inconsistent as they've been. Uh, it's hard to really get away from them at those prices. Uh, as far as Arizona goes, I, McHugh's been kind of up and down the season, been up of late. Uh, in that ballpark, I'm still not jumping all over him. Uh, as far as a GPP arm, I think you can kind of more target against him. I don't mind Jake Lamb uh, at that price. I don't mind Chris Herman at 3,200, Gene Segura 31. These guys are very playable. Brian Jury, 2,700. Uh, Michael Bourne with some stolen base upside at 2,400. Already has three this season, so... Uh, he does have some upside born. It does have a lower floor than you'd like, but overall at that price tag, you can't really knock him. Uh, if you want to look at Goldie at 4,100 before that price tag drops up because uh, kind of starting to come around a little bit of late, um, you can jump on that too. Uh, Padres in Seattle. Uh, I like Nathan Carnes here, 8,700. Not a bad option against the Padres, as usually all pitchers are somewhat of an option. Uh, but Andrew Cashman is a guy I'm looking to pick on here. Um, ben 
fairly average against lefties in his career, 337, but allowed 1.11 home runs per nine. Uh, I don't mind guys like Cano. Uh, Seager's a little bit overpriced for me at 3,800, but I, I can't knock him. Aoki's a guy leading off. I definitely don't mind. Um, and overall, I mean, the Seattle team does have a pretty high run total, so I think you can target them safely in cash games and GPPs. I'm not going full overboard on them just because there are the cores game around. You do have those games I just mentioned as being high scoring, safe, going out the best ballpark to hit in, but still, day game there shouldn't be too bad. Um, as far as Padres side go, there's no hitters you, you really need to consider, um, even with Matt Kemp sort of getting a little bit of a jump on things of late, but overall, uh, not really playable. Uh, moving on to the next game, and this is the big one. you got cores here, and all the bats are, are certainly in play. The Reds aren't priced up as quite as highly as I thought they were going to be, uh, not like DraftKings where it makes kind of Votto and Bruce like strict GPP plays. Um, but Charlie Blackman, 47, Arenado, 45, Trevor Story, 41. Not a bad price tag for those guys. And uh, Gerardo Parra, 3,300 is kind of a steal at that price. And um, you're looking against Dan Straley. Um, yeah, of course, it's just a different animal. Uh, and you're looking, even if he pitches about four or five innings and they get to him pretty quickly, or even if he pitches seven and you get this bullpen for even an, an inning or two, I mean, they're awful. And uh, you're expecting a lot of damage from this Colorado team. Uh, just in addition with that bullpen factor. So uh, I'm all over the Rockies today, and you should be too. Their prices aren't too bad. You can get maybe one or two of them in your lineup with a solid arm. Um, and I think a guy like Parra is certainly in play. Uh, as far as like the the Reds' cheaper options, I don't mind Cozart at 38. Uh, sorry, Carlos Gonzalez at 3,700 is a guy I glossed over because, one, he's not still not over 4K, which is unreal. Uh, he's a guy who needs to be priced up um, because he is one of their elite bats. But a guy like Brandon Phillips there, uh, 3,200, certainly in play. Um, you look at Bettis, he has reverse splits, uh, 3, 5, 6, well, but two right-handers since 2014, 1.22 horns per nine. Uh, lefties have hit him fairly average. It's not as great as the righties, but uh, 329 Woba against left-handers, that puts kind of guys like Bruce and Vaughn obviously in play, especially with those park factors there. So uh, this is a game where you can look at uh, some value, and I, I think guys like Billy Hamilton, Phillips, Parra, Gonzalez are all right there in that range. You can build a kind of an under 4K stack. Uh, obviously, you're not taking a look at pitching, so we can move on there. Cubs and Dodgers, 505 here, uh, the middle game. I'm not really looking at either pitcher. Uh, I'm looking to more so target those Chicago Cubs bats. Uh, they're a little expensive, um, but Chris Bryant, Dexter Fowler, Zobrist all hit lefties very well. Uh, so you're looking at them. Rizzo's prices really come down to 3600 That is something to consider because he has hit lefties well in the past. He's been relatively unlucky. The bat is so much lower than his career average, um, and the strikeout rate's even lower. So it's not like he's – completely off of his game um just been a little unlucky and i'm still going to be taking shots with rizzo there especially now with the the reduced price tag uh you can also might find nadison russell there at 3300 later in the lineup i don't mind him um jorge solar 2700 would be a guy to maybe take a look at so cups kind of bring you something at all price ranges all areas of gpps and cash games uh, as far as the Dodgers side goes, I, I think there are better bats on the slate. Um, I think you can kind of pass. If you want to look at an Adrian Gonzalez who's coming around a bit, you can. 3200 is not a bad price tag for him. Um, he had a nice series against the Mets there. Um, eight, eight hits over the three games, so that was encouraging to see. Uh, outside of that, I mean, there's not a lot of guys that I do. Like Corey Seager would be the other honorable mention. Uh, but guys like Yasiel Puig, uh, Jack Pedersen have, have just been – uh, very inconsistent. I'm kind of done taking shots with them. Texas and Cleveland, this one kind of an interesting game on both sides. Uh, you got Josh Tomlin, reverse splits guy, uh, has allowed a fair amount of home runs to right-handed bats since 2014, 1.72. Uh, guys like Ian Desmond and Adrian Beltre kind of catch my eye there as far as GPP options go. Um, but I'm kind of looking at some of these Cleveland bats too. Uh, Francisco Lindor, 4K, is kind of my favorite shortstop. Um, he, he hits lefties very well. Hits better from the right side. You look at Holland, uh, not a good arm by any means. So uh, I think you can kind of feel safe targeting him. And overall, Cleveland doesn't offer a ton of right-handed bats, but overall Lindor uh, certainly in play. Mike Napoli at 3,400 is a decent option. Obviously, Rajai Davis at 34 uh, going to be playable, hitting a leadoff there. So 
I do like him a lot. There are a couple, you know, the three there, especially if they're hitting in the top five of the order. If Davis sneaks up as he should, um, it would become a solid, solid value. Breaking into the evening games, uh, Tanner Rourke, a, a decent option because uh, really outside of Justin Verlander, there's no other cash game arm on that later slate. So Tanner Rourke kind of steps in as, a, as a, an option, but you're not really splitting much of a difference between prices. So uh, I think you can learn Ver Verlander there, even though Rourke is in arguably the better matchup. Uh, Jeremy Hellickson, he struggled with lefties this year. Obviously, Daniel Murphy, Bryce Harper below 4K is something I'm going to be jumping all over. Um, very playable cash game wise, just because one, he walks a ton, uh, still, even when he's not producing as far as hit in the hits column, he's still doing other things. So, uh, it, his floor is still relatively high, even with his struggles. Uh, and at that price, I think he's just kind of an automatic lock. Um, I, I talked about some of the Washington bats as far as DK plays. I'm not really on him here. 3,500 is a little more than I want for, for Zimmerman, who, yes, has come around really over the last, 10 games or so. I mean, a couple homers here and there, but overall, relatively inconsistent. I think there's better options at better price tags, and we'll kind of get to them in the next game a bit here. Ben Revere, kind of a cheap outfielder, but um, been a little bit up and down, but if you need someone to go kind of low with, I don't mind. Uh, same with Jason Worth. So, kind of a cheap value stack if you're looking to kind of pick on Hellickson, uh, but overall, I think really Harper and um, Murphy kind of stand out as the top options there. Uh, Toronto and the Yankees, and this one I, I like a ton just because I, I really like picking on Nova tonight. Uh, Nova, two right-handers, a 1.65 points per nine since 2014, 346 Woba. Uh, I like that there. Uh, lefties even, have even hit them all 356 Woba since 2014. So you, you can definitely look at all these Toronto bats. And once again, Bautista is the highest expensive. He's the only one over 4K at 4,500. Michael Saunders, 39. Donaldson, 39. Encarnacion is the guy why who is why I don't like Zimmerman because he's 3600. He matches that price tag, uh, so all all those big bats are certainly playable. And then you get Devin Travis down low um, at 2300 is is a you know one of the cash game locks on the slate for me. Um, has a hit in each game in the return there, um, and overall at that price tag in this matchup, but he's just kind of an easy plug and play at second base for value, and it really opens things up. So. Uh, you can definitely look at them. As far as the Yankee side of things go, Marco Estrada, the only thing that jumps out at me as far as the lefties go, it's it's a 1.45 horns per nine to lefty since 2014. Uh, that would put guys like McCann, Ellsbury, Gardner in some of a GPP territory. I'm not all over it. Uh, I think there's better better options. But as far as a one-off guys, if you want to be different and get some low ownership, they're they're not a bad play. Uh, this next one here, two lefties on the hill and two bad ones. So this is something that could open up a lot for the right-handers. Um, and as far as catchers go, there are two on the slate. JT Realmuto has hit lefties well. Francisco Cervelli has hit lefties well. Uh, so you can kind of punt down there. I don't think you need to pay up a catcher. And there's not one really that, that jumps my head that you really need to do that with uh, outside of maybe a Victor Martinez. But overall, I think you can kind of skip down there. Um, a Chris Johnson is kind of a dirt cheap first base option. Uh, this Miami team kind of opens up a ton of value. Uh, Martin Prado, David Freeze, Jungho Kang, if the more expensive one, he's a thousand higher than those two. Certainly playable. All three hit lefties well. Uh, they offer some value. Kang a little bit higher upside, so I, I kind of prefer him, but he also comes with a heavier price tag. Jordy Mercer likely going to be hitting lead off at 2700 Certainly playable. If Hecavaria somehow sneaks up in the top of the lineup, I don't mind him as a GPP option. Um, his hit lefties well, hit lefties well last year, so certainly playable. Uh, Marcel Azuna kind of comes in as one of the top outfield options because his price tag at 4200 is not really equivalent to what he's been doing lately. I mean, he's been on an absolute tear, uh, and I think you just kind of lock him in and, and ride the streak. So you can look at McCutcheon and Marte as well. Um, I mean, really, those, those three outfielders are – above 4k but they're certainly very playable in this matchup uh tampa and kansas city this one I, i'm not a big fan of as far as offense goes ian kennedy 8100 is a decent gpp option just because the race strike out a ton against right-handed pitching it's also in kaufman so you like that ballpark there uh, obviously there's some home run upside for some of these royals bat or uh raised bats just because kennedy can be home run prone at times but uh, i definitely don't mind it there uh overall i this game's just kind of a stay away on FanDuel for me. I mean, 
the prices aren't cheap enough, kind of like on DraftKings, for me to take any shots on. Uh, if, if you wanted to, I mean, you could look at a Corey Dickerson down low. Uh, Steve Pierce is, is priced a little bit too highly for me. Uh, I don't mind um, a Brad Miller at 3K if you wanted to be a little bit different. So something to, get, to consider. Uh, if you're looking at Royals, Bats, Lorenzo Cain, and Eric Cosmer, kind of the only ones that really jump out at me there. Detroit and L.A., um, this one you're obviously looking to pick on Shasin a bit. Um, Mike Trout, 4900 I not quite the points per dollar price tag that I'm looking for. Uh, I like him more on DraftKings where I talked about him a bit. Um, Verlander is a guy who I, I don't mind in cash games. Him and Rourke are kind of the only two options I, I really like on this slate as far as cash games. So uh, with those two, you can kind of lock them in uh, and, and go that route. But even though the Angels don't strike out a ton, the price tag's not that crazy uh, where he needs to get seven plus, eight plus strikeouts. So uh, you can feel pretty safe. Miguel Cabrera, 4,300. The Tigers are a little bit better valued here on FanDuel. I don't mind them one through four. Cabrera, Kinsler, Martinez, and other Victor Martinez there. Uh, certainly playable. Castellanos at 3,400 in GPPs. Not a big fan of the L.A. ballpark there as far as power goes, but these Tiger bats are certainly playable. Uh, again, Shasim, who's been been average uh, against right-handed, right-handed hitters, 327 Woba. So uh, certainly playable. Uh, I think they kind of round out that night if you wanted to be different, get some exposure to that late game there. That's going to wrap things up with the FanDuel Punch-Out. Everyone have a, a happy Memorial Day, and be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.